Dumb Bleep number one. This is going to be a real quick one from John Fetterman, who's running against Dr. Oz. And, um, okay. In Texas? Is this in Texas? This is, <laughs> this is in Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. I'm so far off. Way off. off. Yeah. Way off. Okay, real quick video from him. My name is John Fetterwoman. <laughs> That's it. That's the dumb right there. Listen, I get it. It's a funny joke, but yeah, it's not your name. I mean, it's not his name. It's Fetterman. Look, there's two signs right there that say Fetterman. Yeah. You know, I get, I get why the you man would do is a that. Fetter. But like, if he just calls himself John Fetterwoman, then he's going to get the woman's vote. I guess that's what's going to happen. This is a really dumb race. Like Doctor Oz, not even from Pennsylvania, not even living. I think he lives in like New Jersey or something. He seems like a pretty terrible candidate overall. Fetterman literally had like a stroke and stuff, and had, I mean, he has a hard time even talking. Mm. He had to look down to remember the joke that he had written down. Like, here's the joke: My name, all right, my name is John Fetterman. We're going to say woman instead of man at the end. And he had to pause and look down because he already forgot what he was supposed to say. Yeah. But I think that's what that's the, just the kind of politics that we're in these days. I like what Daisy said here. She says, "What about fetter they? <laughs> True. Or fetter them. True. Now you're just being you're just being so mm. exclusionary. All right, we're gonna breeze through that one real fast because we do have some. Right. Number one, John Fetter woman. Number two, uh, let's talk. Let's listen to the view. That's a great screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> That is great. Yeah. I'm not even going to hit play yet. You got to watch <laughs> just, the video. Just bask. That is a great screenshot. I All right. I, I think you hit the nail right on the head in the sense that we came together as a country because it was a foreign adversary. Yeah. That is. She's talking about uh, the togetherness that we felt on 9 12 after 9 11. Mm. Just a little context here why i think it, it it was an act of foreign terrorism and so we felt like how dare you come to our country and harm us the biggest threat to our country today says the fbi's director is white supremacy and domestic mm -hmm. terrorism merrick garland said the biggest threat to our democracy is white supremacy and domestic terrorism how do you come together when it's homegrown terror the, and, and we have never addressed why there is that issue that remains in this country 400 years later. And until we get to that, until we have accountability, we are not, I don't think, ever going to be able to come uh, close. Mm. Accountability, Charlie. Oh. Charlie, would you like to just go, I know that you want to take accountability, and I know that you're okay with it. Would you like to go ahead and take accountability for what people two, three, four hundred years ago did? No. No? No. So you're not going to take accountability? No. Oh, okay. I see how I see how you're playing this. No. I'm not responsible for other people's actions. Yeah, but your group did it. Yeah. <laughs> It's ridiculous. See how racist that is? <laughs> it, it would be like saying that we should be mad at all black people because a few of them stole sneakers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. yeah, that's not a good yeah. idea. Or the ones in California that are robbing Louis Vuitton and, and Gucci and all that. Yeah, I mean, I, we're going to have to cut that out due to the racist nature of even making that statement that yeah. you just made. I know. We might lose our sponsors over it's, that. It would, but, but but that would be the same. It would. That those that the black people have to atone for other black people's sins. That is how you get to racism. That is how you get to white supremacy. Martin Luther King Jr. said black supremacy was as bad as white supremacy. You can't group people into little groups by their skin color and then say that they're they have to be accountable for what other individuals did. Mm. It just don't make no sense. Yeah. It doesn't. Okay, that was and dumb see, lead now, number two. Now, I do want to highlight something that we've talked a lot about on this show over the years. Okay, we've brought up many points to you guys over the years. Go back and listen, where we talked about how they start labeling people is going to be important. Okay? When the Southern Poverty Law Center or the, the, the U.S. District Attorney or the United States Attorney, whatever they're called, I can't remember, when uh, certain people in positions of power start labeling you as something for having a Gadsden flag or whatever, that those labels are going to become important. And you're starting to see how that labeling is important. 
because they disagree with you. They label you as a domestic terrorist. And now they're saying the greatest threat is domestic terrorism and white supremacy. And they group you in and all of that. And how can we come together when we have a band, a roving band of liberty loving domestic terrorists? There's no way we can come together. That's the enemy. This is compassion talking, by the way. I saw someone That's posting. That's the enemy. We've got to get rid of the cancer of domestic terrorism. I saw someone shit posting about Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, because he was having dinner with some Republican lawmakers. Ooh. Yeah. That's bad. That's where it's become. Like, you can't even associate with these. You can't even talk to them no. and be, be cordial with any of them because they're terrorists. It's like being cordial with Al-Qaeda. All right. <laughs> All right. Number three. Here comes number th- so earlier in the Osama week. Osama Cruz Laden. <laughs> earlier in the week, we had some concerning inflation data ticking back up just a little bit. We couldn't string together two consecutive months of uh, at least flatlined inflation that went back up. And unfortunately for the White House, they have planned this big Inflation Reduction Act celebration party at the time that the CPI numbers were coming on, on that day. And they just went through it. And they just went through with it. They must have thought, like everyone in the market thought, if you saw what happened in the market, the market thought that we were going to show inflation coming down. And so they scheduled this party on the CPI day to, to go along with the CPI numbers coming down and a big celebration party of the Inflation Reduction Act to talk about how inflation was coming down. Unfortunately, that ended up not being the case, unfortunately for them. Uh, But they still went along with all their speeches that they had written uh, already. This is some of what Nancy Pelosi said. There was a really funny, uh, we're not going to play it because it was just funny, but Joe Biden was giving his speech and Fox News had the, uh, the market like going down while Joe Biden was giving his speech about how good the Inflation Reduction Act was doing and (laughs) inflation was, it was just, it was, it was really good. It was perfect. But here's what Nancy Pelosi said. Again, let's hear it for the staff because the staff has made such a thing. And so many friends. What a thrill it is to be here to celebrate this life-changing legislation, making Infl- the Inflation Reduction Act. Inflation Reduction Act, so beautifully named for all that it does. As the name suggests, this landmark law is cutting costs and inflation fighting and driving down costs for kitchen table items for America's working families. Mr. President, thank you for unifying and inspiring a vision of a stronger, fairer, safer future. Okay, that's enough. (laughs) So the Inflation Reduction Act and all that it does, and it's she even talks about how well it was named for all that it does. So you know, beautifully just named. doubling down on it. And then she yeah. talks about kitchen table items. Food was the biggest driver of the uptick in inflation Wasn't for this new like CPI report. Or yeah, it was something percent? like that. I, can't, I didn't actually didn't pull the numbers in. Yeah. So literally kitchen table items. I mean, you can't get more kitchen table item than food, you know. Uh, so besides, unless you're getting a table, I just love that they still went obviously with the speeches that they had written out. Yeah. They, they obviously choreographed this. What's your backup plan? <laughs> they didn't have a backup plan. You have no, you don't have a contingency. Plan? They had no contingency plan for if the CPI <laughs> came in hot, they were so sure it was going to come in light. So uh, that, I love it. It was great. Okay. Have a whole team. <laughs> we got a tweet here to go through. That was dumb number three, Nancy Pelosi. Inflation reduction. Number four act. is from Dash Dobros- Dobrovsky. Dobrovsky. We've uh, we've shown him before. Yeah. He's he's pretty good. He doesn't have a blue check mark, but his tweets. I mean, this one's at uh, over thirteen thousand at the time I screenshot it. Seventy thousand likes. Yeah. Elon Musk said he wanted to end world hunger. Then United Nations showed Elon exactly how much it would cost to end world hunger. Then Elon uh, reneged. I, I just didn't want to say that. <laughs> It feels offensive. <laughs> then Elon reneged on his promises, tried to buy Twitter to reinstate a racist dictator, failed, then endorsed Ron DeSantis. Elon is not a good guy. He's, there, a, bad, he's a bad man. There are so many things in this tweet. Now, you can just say whatever you want, I guess, and just get a lot of retweets. Mm-hmm. Hopefully a lot of them are people making fun of him. But I guess we have to go line by line through it. He wanted to end world hunger. The United Nations showed him exactly how much it would cost. $6 billion to end world hunger. Mm-hmm. So we'd never put 
six billion dollars into ending world hunger before. And so, what did Elon actually do in that situation? He goes, "Okay, well, show me the data." Yeah, show me how. Yeah, show me how that's going to solve the problem. Yeah, and I want to make sure that this six billion dollars isn't going to, you know, filter through the fingers of the of the administrations of this program so that they get their dirty hands rich before people actually get the food. Now, as a reference, we've sent like $50 billion to Ukraine. We just upped uh, $80 billion more into the budget for IRS people. I mean, what about what the government spends on stuff? $300 billion towards green. You couldn't have taken $6 billion of that $300 billion that you're putting towards the climate crisis to stop people from starving to death? Mm -hmm. Really? But Elon Musk. And then... He, he reneged on his promise, tried to buy Twitter to reinstate a racist dictator. That's why he wants to buy Twitter. He failed. Now, by failed, what they mean is, what does he mean by he failed to buy Twitter? Because literally right now, he is in a court battle with Twitter to try and force him to buy Twitter. Now, that's failing to buy Twitter, if you want to look at it that way, is yeah. when Twitter takes you to court to force you to buy Twitter. I don't Same see the thing. I don't see the difference. That's failure in those two things. That is, yeah. that is now, you. He did, he did try to back out because the, the numbers weren't correct. <laughs> and anybody does this when they're buying any company, by the way, it's just a negotiation. Typ typically when you buy a company, you hire someone who is uh, very good at looking at financials mm. and numbers and whether or not that company is telling the truth based on the valuation of what you're going to purchase them for. Okay. Usually it's a CFO type of person or a really, really good accountant who specializes in analyzing financial reports and making sure that the company's not lying to you about how they're getting their revenue. And that is what he did. He's like, look, Twitter's lying about their users. Now, I don't know. I haven't looked at their, you know, statements and, and I don't know the behind the scenes. I have no idea, but that's the claim that Elon's making. And I think that's a valid claim to consider. Yeah. Like, look, I promised you a certain price for your company based on the information that I had. And now the information doesn't seem to pass muster. And so I, I want to renew it, renegotiate, or I want to back out. So, oh, by the way, anyone who's in the trading class right now, I forgot to tell you all this morning, it is looking like he's going to be forced to buy Twitter. Just it, it, the, the whistleblower spoke and there wasn't enough blown whistling about them knowing about bots and stuff like that. I think he's still going to be forced to buy it at 54.20, and it's currently trading at 42. Do with that information what you will. All right, next one, dumb bleep number five. Here we go. Oh, BS Bernie coming back in the dumb bleep. I guess we'll kind of stick on the Elon Musk here for a minute too. Bernie says on the 60th anniversary of JFK's famous speech, now this is when JFK was talking about, we will go to the moon. And all that stuff that he was saying. That was pretty good. Was that pretty good? Yeah, yeah it was decent. Oh, well, that's scary. Yeah. Looking around, make sure I'm not going to get shot here. <laughs> uh, famous speech, and as a couple of billionaires look to exploit space for their own gain, let us not forget his proclamation that space advancements must be won and used for the progress of all people. Not just the wealthy few. God. That because that's what they're doing, by mm -hmm. the way. They're uh, Elon wants to go to Mars to set up a billionaire. <laughs> it's to evade taxation, actually. Yeah, he just wants to yeah. go there because he can funnel his money it'll through Mars. New, it'll be the most exclu <laughs> exclusive billionaires club. Yeah. That you like very few people can get into. They're all gonna all the billionaires gonna be fighting yeah. to go die on Mars. It's yeah. <laughs> what they're gonna be doing. Okay, Good it's not Lord. just Mars. What about Starlink? That, really? Yeah. That's where I get really frustrated. And it reminds me of that conversation we had with your brother the other day. All that Bernie is focused on is his hatred for people who are rich. That's it. Mm. Because if he were to sit and think one second about it and turn off the envy and the hatred and the greed that he has for other people's stuff, uh, then he would be able to see that Starlink is going to help a lot of people. My family just got internet for the first time. For the, for the first time. Okay, they had dial-up internet. But other than that, this is their first time yeah. having it. We, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we just got streaming yeah. there. It's 2022. And it's not just people living in southern Illinois who don't have internet. It's people in other countries that don't have access to other internet. 
this guy goes out there and talks about nothing that they're doing is benefiting the people, the progress of the people. What this to me, I know that I get real worked up about this Starlink thing and Bernie talking about space. We talked about it a lot. But this right here just shows you exactly why you never want these people in charge because they cannot think towards the future. They cannot think towards advancements that will actually help millions to billions of people have better lives and lift them out of poverty because all he can think about is that right there at the beginning, the only people that could buy TVs were super rich people. That's all he can think about. And that hatred stops any progress from ever actually happening. All you ever do is you take whatever amount of money Musk has right now and you say we're going to divide that out among everyone and you never grow afterwards. And that is socialism in a nutshell. What about the sheer fact that he has saved NASA <laughs> like 90%? He reduced costs by 90%. Just he doesn't so care much. about that. I mean, doesn't that help real people? Because where does NASA get their money? Why? <laughs> NASA. I like the way people You're doing say the Jordan NASA. Peterson yeah. NASA. I like the way people say NASA instead of NASA. So I'm like NASA. You should say it the okay. way that you say the word. Mm. So aeronautics. My thing is like NASA. What <laughs> NASA? If <laughs> if they're reducing the costs of space exploration or or whatever we're doing in space, doesn't that benefit everyone? Because how does NASA get their money? Elon Musk well, has through taxation, which takes money from who? You. Money you could use to fight off the current inflation. Elon Musk has saved NASA enough money to end world hunger several times over. Yeah, but I was going to say multiple times <laughs> yeah. over. Yeah. Well, he doesn't care about that. He cares about the fact that some people have a lot of money. That's all he cares about. Ridiculous. All right, that was number five. Here's number six. I guess I'll just give you this one real quick. This is just real fast. Let's make fun of him. Charlie and I were thinking about going because the Mar there's a Marxist school happening by the way if you are in phoenix or minneapolis or atlanta or nyc or where's bellingham is that in the you know never heard of mm. that place uh marxist school so uh 2022 marxist school starts this week in phoenix join discussions on marxist theory and strategy in the fight for socialism in our lifetime register now for the event and it's coming up in october in atlanta we were talking about going to it the problem is it's too expensive it's 40 bucks per person to go to the thing <laughs> Um, the good news is that if you're unemployed, it's only $10 to go to the thing. Um, but yeah, if you want to register, just so you know, to go to Marxist school to learn about Marxist ideology and theory, uh, all you got to do is pony up the 40 bucks <laughs> to attend their event, and it uh, should be a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to go any further into it. Yeah. That's enough. Never mind the fact <laughs> that – could you imagine someone having like a Nazi school? You know, or a, fasc <laughs> a fascism school. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> they come and learn all about fascism and that not being banned on Twitter would for sure be banned on Twitter. Because you could be like, well, Hitler didn't implement real fascism. Like right. He's just a bad guy. Yeah. You know, Mussolini is bad guys. Yeah, had exactly. control over this stuff. All right. That now real fascism. And that is a thing of beauty. Like those fascists we met at that uh, Politicon conference, oh, you know, God. they seem like nice enough guys that yeah. didn't want to murder a lot of people. You know, so there might be real fascism out there. Yeah. That's just this beautiful utopia. But the problem is the historical examples we have are not good. Neither are the historical examples we have of Marxism. And, but, and that's the crazy thing is that this is allowed. Now, I don't think any of it should be banned, by the way. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't agree <clears throat> with banning anything. Like, I think people should <clears throat> freely be able to meet and discuss ideas and, and whatever that charge money for it if they want to, whatever. Um. Those types of things should be allowed and out in the open so that we could figure out what, what the best path forward is, which is none of those things. Like, you don't have to agree with them. But I just love the hypocrisy of it that, like, it's okay to flash the hammer and sickle. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You don't see anyone with a, with a swastika okay in their Twitter to chant profile. For the Red Revolution. Yeah. Which killed millions of people. More people than fascism. Yes. Yeah. They also had camps, prison camps. Mm -hmm. They were called gulags. Same thing. But this is still gets to be celebrated and learned, and my God. I like what Jess in the live group said, capitalism is bad. Give me $40, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. <laughs> it's All like right. AOC and her, it know, is. her it is. tax the rich sweatshirts. All right, that was Dumb Bleep number six. Uh, the Dumb Bleep number seven is going to go to Kamala, Kamala Harris. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a twofer. 
the first one is them asking her about the border, and you know we're libertarians. The border is not like the craziest thing to us or anything. But the second video is real fun as well. So don't believe number seven just goes to Kamala Harris, our fearless vice leader. Final topic here. Since uh, we're here in Texas, I want to ask you about the border. Would you call the border secure? I think that there is no question that we have to do what the president and I asked Congress to do. Is the first request we made, pass a bill to create a pathway to citizenship. The border is secure, but we also have a broken immigration system, in particular over the last four years before we came in, and it needs to be fixed. We're going to have two million people cross this border for the first time ever. You're confident this border is secure? We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. But there are still a lot of problems that we are trying to fix, given the deterioration that happened over the last four years. It's Trump's fault. Yeah. Just so you know, Trump's fault. Deny, deflect, deny, deflect, deny, deflect, not yep. deflect. The next one I thought was really good. They talked about the fact that the Democrats are helping some people win uh, some of these, quote unquote, crazy right wing extremist Republicans. He asked her about that. So, hey, real quick, I got to give props to uh, who is that? Chuck Todd from Meet the Press yeah, for pressing her on a couple issues. <laughs> I'm curious when you see the Democratic Party and some parts of the party funding ads to promote some of these election deniers in primaries, whether it's Michigan, the high profile race there, mm -hmm. Illinois, Colorado, New Hampshire. It looks like a cynical, you know, a little bit cynical. And the president went out of his way to say, there, there are good Republicans here. Should you leave the good Republicans alone in a primary? Should, is, the, is the Democratic Party making a mistake here by, by, you know, those people could win if you're not careful. I mean, listen, I'm not gonna tell people how to run their campaigns. Uh, you know, I, I ran in terms of statewide office. Would you have I ran, done this? I so ran, would you have done this? Is this in your, is this something I, you'd be I'm comfortable I'm not gonna doing? tell people how to run their campaigns, Chuck. I ran for a statewide, for attorney general, mm -hmm. re-election, won both times, for Senate, won that race. And I know that it is best to, to, to let a candidate along with their, their advisors let them make the decision based on what they believe is in the best interest of their state. I'm not. No, oh, by the way, we did find the only people she thinks should be able to make their own decisions. Our candidates. <laughs> the candidates. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're the vice president of the United States and you're a Democrat, but I no reason you should. You don't have the authority to have any input on the way that they're conducting their elections. Mm -hmm. But I like that people actually are talking about it. I thought it would just get memory hold completely. Uh, it's not getting memory hold completely. He's actually bringing it up, saying, hey, you know these crazy people you're warning everyone about in the midterm elections? Like, uh, you guys kind of put them there. There were other people running against them. You're funding them. You funded the terrorists. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go to Representative Hoyer and what he had to say. Uh, House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer about the deep state. Hmm. Employees. That's what the previous president suggested. That's what his supporters are suggesting now. Number eight, by the way. And they're suggesting not only that, but they're going to put people in place who want to follow their political edicts, legal or not. They made it quite clear. They want to eliminate what they call the deep state. The deep state is a cadre of professionals dedicated to honoring the Constitution, the laws of this country, and carrying out the policies of the Congress and the President. By the way, it is the Congress that makes policy. Under the Constitution, under Article I, it is the executive that carries out policies. I don't think he understands what the deep state is. No. No. It's just Congress that makes policies, right? We don't have any bureaucracies that make Surprised policies. Surprised he's still alive, honestly. <laughs> I think he's trying to figure out if he's still alive or not. Um, and I love the yeah continuous tap. But the one listen, or two would be fine. These deep staters, 
that people are talking about, those are just people that are dedicated to honoring the Constitution mm. and the laws of our country, yeah. Charlie, and whatever, you know, the people in charge want them to do. All right? They're not bad people. Mm -mm. It's not possible because we, we have a Constitution, and the legislative branch are the ones who make the rules. He doesn't get it. Yeah. Clearly, the, okay, number eight is a two-parter. See how I sneak in extra stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Um. Let's go to Hank Johnson. Oh, finally, Hank, you get them. You get to come in here and completely redeem yourself. Um, January 6, <laughs> 2021 will never be forgotten. An infamous day in American history. MAGA Republicans descended upon the Capitol, engaged in an insurrection. Uh, they occupied the Capitol five People were killed, hundreds injured, including hundreds of Capitol Hill police officers attacked and bludgeoned. Um, uh, it was uh, a day that we'll never forget. And people on the local level uh, at affected school board meetings, they won't forget the MAGA uh, Republicans descending on their school board meetings uh, after January 6th like January 6, disrupting meetings. It was a co coordinated uh, attack happening across the country. Americans won't forget about it. Uh, school board uh, members, teachers, administrators subjected to violence, threats of violence, harassment, intimidation. Uh, and in response to that, the National School Boards Association sent a letter to the Biden administration seeking federal help. Things had gotten so far out of hand. And by the way, there's not one scintilla of evidence, either direct or indirect, that there was any coordination between the Biden administration and the National School Boards Association. Uh, okay, that's enough, Hank. God. I like what <clears throat> Magoo said here. I'm going to give him credit. He said, Jan 6th. Almost flipped the capital over. <laughs> I think he's worried the school boards are going to tip over. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, by the way, if you don't know what we're talking about, yes, <laughs> I did bring it for everyone. Uh, because how do you talk about Hank Johnson? We we can't let him live it down. I don't care if he knows now. But let's listen to him. A uh, island that at its widest level is, what, 12 miles from shore to shore? And at its smallest level, uh, or smallest uh, uh, location, <laughs> it's uh, seven miles. He looks uh, younger now. Uh, between one shore and the other. Uh, Is that correct? I don't have the exact uh, dimensions, but uh, to your point, sir, I think Guam is a small island. Very <laughs> small island, about 24 miles, if I recall, long. So 20, 24 miles long, about seven miles wide at the least widest uh, place on the island, and about 20, about 12 miles <laughs> wide uh, uh, on the widest part of the island. And um, I don't know how many square miles <laughs> that, that is. Do you happen to know? I don't have that. Uh, figure with me, sir. I can certainly supply it to you if you'd like. Yeah, my, my fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over <laughs> and, uh, and capsize. Uh, we don't anticipate that. The, uh, the Guam population, I think, currently about... A oh, my gosh. How high was he for that questioning? God bless. I wow. think the guy he was questioning did a great job handling it yeah. by not just bursting out of laughter. Sir, that, yeah, that's afterwards. a small island. It is small. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's attached to the earth <laughs> that's a, that's still. Tip over. Like right now. What does so. he think islands are? <laughs> All right. Flo little floating. Like floating. How do you keep them in place is what I want to know. Yeah. There's like little... Engines, like pushing them around? <laughs> God. Okay. Um, so number eight was technically dumb people in the house. Mm -hmm. We got dumb in this house. That still keep getting reelected, by the yeah, way. Yeah, they're still going. 
Still if I ran it. a campaign against Hank, I would just play that Guam video over and over yep. and over again. That's all you have to do. Like, uh. Okay, uh, next one. This could be contentious. We'll see, because I find that we have some disagreements potentially mm-hmm. in the group on this. Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. Um, so the here's the alleged controversy. Under the sea. Unfortunately, this does feel like a forced controversy. Like, there were some people, there's always crazies that are mad. And then it became like, I can't believe people on the right are mad about this. And then, unfortunately, other people jumped in and started, like, defending, okay, let's defend this idea that people are mad. Why would they be mad about it? I I don't, listen, I'm sorry. I don't think it matters uh, whether or not a fictional character is a different skin color. Yeah. I I really don't. I mean, I, I don't care. SpongeBob is a sponge, it's, it's, and he's yellow. Well, let's. Uh, <laughs> speaking of that, on that <laughs> idea, we can hear what Matt Walsh had to say before we get into our deeper con because he kind of alludes to some of the stuff that we want to say. A lot of videos today, mm. a lot of elements, as they call it. All right, Max Winter says a black actor playing the Little Mermaid really is a case of white erasure. All forms of art, including fairy tales, are meant to be reflections of the author's experiences and observations. Hans Christian Andersen probably based The Little Mermaid based on experiences he went through in his home country of Denmark. So it makes sense that most of his characters would be white since that's the world and the people he was surrounded by. Yeah, I'm given the way that we deal with these sorts of issues, I'm, I'm sympathetic to that. Now, I would be fine, like we talked about yesterday. We don't have to rehash the entire thing. But if we all agreed that race in, in films and TV shows, especially fictional stories, don't matter... And we're going to take a kind of colorblind casting approach. And, uh, you know, it just it, it, it doesn't matter as long as the actor is good. If we could all agree on that, then I'd be on board. And as I said, that's basically what it was for many years, what it was back in the 90s. But what I cannot abide by is the double standard thing where we say, well, race, the race, the casting, uh, the race of in, in casting matters only for certain races and not for others. That, that no, no, we're not doing that. Also, by the way, with The Little Mermaid, can, can we also just mention that just from, from, a, from a scientific perspective, okay, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have someone with darker skin who lives deep in the ocean. I mean, if anything, I mean, not only should The Little Mermaid be pale, she should actually be translucent. If you look at deep sea creatures, they're like translucent. They have no kind of pigmentation whatsoever. And they're just like these horrifying, they look like skeletons floating around in the ocean. That's what The Little Mermaid should look like. She should be totally pale where, and skeletal, where you can see her skull through her face. And that would actually be a version of Little Mermaid that I would watch. <laughs> okay. And then that's when you start to go a little far with the idea She here. came out of the ocean <laughs> and got legs. The version that he they, will watch. They swam up to the surface. The version he will watch is the scientific version, whereas... The half human, half fish that lives under the sea and talks to all the different animals down there. Sings beautifully. Has a beautiful singing voice. Yeah. Where that version has translucent, uh, skeletal, terrifying skin. Yeah. At least you're keeping it science at that time when you when you're dealing with a half fish, half person. Her evil um, person is a half octopus, half uh, purple. Um. Ursula. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And her father uh, has a trident and he's <laughs> of course. half man, yeah. half merman. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, he rules a, a group of other mermaids. Is and he mermaids. a half mer they in this, in this yeah. version of it? Now here, what my th- thing here's, let go me ahead. give you my perspective. I don't care. Yeah. I don't give a shit. I think this is, they're doing exactly what they want to do which is stir up controversy for no reason whatsoever. And you're, you're letting them win by giving into this. Mm-hmm. Like it's a cartoon. This is a it's, live action version of it, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Like at the end of the day, it's a fictional story. Now, Nate and I talked about this a little bit this morning. Um, I don't care really about anything that is considered to be made up stories. Yeah. At all. Well, before we get into that, because I do have some stuff to show on that, I do want to say, and we both kind of agree on this, there's a really good book, anyone who's ever interested in business or marketing or just getting out to people that everyone should read, really good book uh, called Story Brand. 
Marketing? I can't remember the author on that. Donald Miller. Donald Miller. Really good book. And um, he talks about the fact that when you watch a movie or whatever it is, people want to see themselves as the hero or as the main character. And when it comes to that, I would just say a lot of these little made-up controversies, I completely understand why you would want to have a character that is not just white. Okay? I, I get it. I think that people want to see themselves, and it's easier when you see someone who's the same skin color as you to whenever you're making yourself the hero in that story. I also think that that idea is why uh, you could say, well, white people don't want to go watch stuff where the, there's a black lead, and the, which I don't, I don't think is, is true. Really, I'm sure it is for some people. I'm sure it is for some people. Uh, but that, it's for the same reason. It doesn't speak to you quite as much because when you see a movie, you want to see yourself living out that main character. Maybe not always. Maybe not when you watch like a psychopathic, like killer movie, something like that. But maybe you do. I don't know. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that later. And so when it comes to this, you have to admit that that is important. I do, I do understand that that's important. But everyone else also has to understand that that is important. And especially when you have like, okay, most of the people in the country as a group are white. And so if you're going to market a movie and people want to see themselves as the character, you might be able to make more money if the lead person is white than, than if they're not. Just, you know, it's a difficult conversation. But that's also important to other people when they go watch it. You want to see yourself as the hero. That's, that's what all of these stories are. Where I have an issue with it, where Charlie and I kind of disagree on, I guess. This is a fictional made-up character, not a real person. This is not a historical event, okay? And also, it's none of it's scientific. It's fantasy. This is a half it's very fish, dark. half person. Yeah. You know, and we know that someone like that would not be able to sing that great. All right? Yeah. So it's not possible. So I have an issue when they do it with real people, like real historical events that are then depicted on the screen afterwards. And I there's a couple instances that I know of specifically that I found out about later. I brought this one up before. This is the kind of thing, like if you're going to be worried about people wokeifying stuff, like they're they're woking something. I don't think casting a black actor is woking something. I don't I don't uh, get that. Yeah. To, to me, the woking something is when you take a real life person from a true story and then you inject one of these woke things or whatever. For instance, in the TV show Mindhunter, which is on Netflix, uh, there is this female uh, detective or she's like a doctor of psychology, something like that. And she's helping them catch these killers or coming up with this idea. Basically, this is when they started creating these uh, profiles of the serial killers so they could try and find people, all of that. Well, she's a real important part to the story. In the TV show, uh, she happens to be gay and going, you know, going through some relationships. It's a pretty kind of a bigger part of the story towards the end of it. She's also dealing with discrimination in the workplace, other FBI agents that are treating her really poorly because she's gay. And so I just watched the show and I was like, oh, that's too bad. I hate that, you know. Then I find out later when I'm reading, okay, the actual person that she's depicting is still married to the same guy that she was married to when this whole thing actually took place. And so then I asked myself, why did they take someone's actual story and inject this story into it? Was there, she, there's a motive. I mean, she could still be married. Was she gay during that time? I don't know if she was gay. I mean, maybe she was running around on her husband with other women. It's possible. It's possible. You know? Anything's possible. That's one. The other one. My thing is, let me just respond to that real yeah. quick. I still don't care. I, I still don't, I still would I, make the case that you would care if it were a movie made about the biggest thing that you ever did in your entire life. And they decide the best thing, the thing that made you feel so good about yourself. And finally, you got a movie made about it. And they decided to inject a storyline that uh, me and you were banging each other the whole time. And it was causing all kinds of problems in your life. Mm. You know, I think you would be like, why did they do that? Yeah. You know, why? Why do that? Why not just tell the story? Yeah. yeah. It gets more viewers. <laughs> it checks some boxes. It checks some boxes. Is what it does. And it, yeah, it checks some boxes. <laughs> and it, and it, yeah, the, the incentive is to make more money, to create controversy. Another box I noticed that was checked is in this TV show called Dr. Death, which I recommend everyone go and watch if you haven't seen it on Peacock. It does have Alec Baldwin. He doesn't kill anyone in it. Actually, he's probably saved some people. Um, it's got Christian Slater, uh, Joshua Jackson, 
in it. Uh, in the story, it's about a um, a surgeon who performs, I think, 36 surgeries, 34 of them. It's a true story. It happened like 10 years ago in Texas. 34 of them ended up with people either being like paralyzed, maimed, or a couple of them ended up being dead. He had like two surgeries that went well. He was terrible. He didn't know what he was doing, or he was doing it on purpose, but I think he was just terrible. Anyway, <clears throat> what happened— He works at the VA now. <laughs> <laughs> He's in prison. Oh, uh, so. okay. Yeah, he's the first, uh, I think he was the first doctor to ever be prosecuted for uh, surgeries that went wrong, basically. Mm. Um, anyway, in this story, there's a nurse. Now, the nurses are the highest of the victimhood hierarchy at a hospital. They're basically the slaves of the hospital. Okay, uh, so you've got to, there may be some other people. lower, like CNAs, <laughs> yeah. the nursing assistants. As far as or techs, society, think about it. COVID, think about there's a 15,000 nurse strike that just was happening last week up north somewhere. I can't remember where it was. Like it's in those, Minnesota. They're the victims of the, of the hospital. So in this story, in the real life story, it was a lowly nurse who had no authority whatsoever at the hospital who ended up speaking up and then getting a hold of these uh talking with these other doctors and testifying. It was basically this one person who spoke truth to power, this corrupt healthcare system that was profit-driven, this terrible narcissistic doctor, and this lowly person with no authority, the lowest on the totem pole, is the one who helped put an end to the entire thing. And this is the guy. They, this, they got a black guy playing him. The problem is that in real life, that just happened 10 years ago, the actual nurse is white. Now, Maybe this guy doesn't care. My question is why? You look at the side-by-side -side pictures of everyone else in the TV show, and they did a pretty good job picking every single other person except for who is the moral compass of the TV show that stops this thing from happening. And they picked a black guy to play him. I still don't care. I would care if I, I were that guy, like someone's depicting me in the TV show and I saved how many people's lives. Maybe during auditions, he was <clears> the best fit. Now I know there could be malicious reasons you think, for you, doing it. Do you, why do you why do you think they did it, Charlie? Let's not talk about what the best possible reason is that they did it. Why do you think they yeah, did that? I just don't know if I want to spend my energy on that when when like people are like taxation is still theft. <laughs> it like, is. I, I'm not saying that I completely agree with the decisions that they've made on casting folks uh, that are not. Uh, depicting the the real, uh, uh, I guess, person that played it. Now, I do care more in a documentary. Like if you say this is a factual video, like this is a f this actually happened. These are real people. We've interviewed the actual person. But anything that says uh, this is based on a true story, but drama was added for effect or whatever, then it's like that's just what it is. It's yeah. drama. It's drama. Why like? I, I just or we got a video we have to play before your heart stops. I just don't but, care that much. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's just my opinion. You don't have I to mean, care. Yeah, it's just my opinion. You know, you're free care. to be wrong as often as you want, Charlie. Yeah. It has always been allowed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the over the, my theme of this dumb bleep, by the way, This is, really bothers you that if, I don't agree with you 100%. No, I just have to clarify. My mm -hmm. theme, this has nothing to do with what you said. My theme is if... You are going to decide that you're going to be upset about who they cast in movie roles. Then at least pick the ones that are representing real life people in a true story. Not the Little Mermaid. Not the Little Mermaid. Yes. That is the entire point the I was trying bleep, to get to. The dumb bleep are people yes. who, ma who are mad about Little Mermaid being black. Yeah. That's the dumb bleep. All right, here, let's do this one real quick. Charlie, if you haven't seen this, your blood's about to boil uh, so hard. Oh, man, I'm excited to be here for it. PSA to everyone out there. I'm speaking for myself, but I'm probably speaking for a large majority of other officers out there. If we're driving on the freeway in our police car, get the f*** out of the way. Get the f*** out of the way. If you merge and we follow behind you and we merge too, you're probably in trouble. Best way to find that out is get the f*** out of the way. I can go 90 miles an hour. You can't. You can't do that. So get the f*** out of the way. If us officers stay behind you long enough, we can find a reason to pull you over. So you might as well get the f out of the way. Super simple. That's all. Oh. Your thoughts. Whew. Rules My for thee. My heart rate went up. Rules for thee and not for me. 
Now that, out of all the things, these are these are people that you're in contact with that you see all the time. This is the one to be upset about today. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. I I can go 90. You can't. Get out of my way. I'm I, the important one. I truly hope that she loses her job over it. I doubt that she will because I guess everything that she said was fine. Plus, she has a union protecting her from being a bad person. But she got a one-day suspension. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I didn't, I didn't follow up on it. Oh, okay. It, power corrupts. Okay. That's what the uh, tagline from whatever libertarian page it was that shared that. Power corrupts. We know that. Uh, this is someone who has power over other people. If they get behind you, just get out of the way. What do you, what do you, what does that mean? Cause they can go 90 and you can't. So stop. She, here's what she hates when she gets behind people, they drive the speed limit Yeah. because they're worried she's going to pull them over for speeding. And she does not want to be driving the speed limit like everyone else. I felt bad for cops before, even people who buy like, uh, you know, the cop cars that they sell later on at the auctions and stuff. And they still got like the spotlight on there or something. You tell it used to be a cop. Yeah. They get behind people. Driving the speed limit. Slow down. Now, I don't. I drive 10 miles in, ten miles over all the time, whether there's a cop behind me or not. It's always 10 miles over because I got nothing to hide, and I'm going to go 80. I don't care. And I think I project that to them when I decide I'm going to keep doing that. Yeah. To me, it's the people who freak out. They're yeah. like, they I feel their like brakes. a cop would be like, why is that person so concerned about me pulling them over? I need to pull them over right now. That's what I've always thought. I don't hit my brakes. Yeah. When I go around the cop. You don't but, slow down, nothing. Then she says, if we follow you long enough, we can find a reason to pull you over. Yeah, of course. It's true. That's the way the rules are written. Why do you think I've been pulled over 77 times? Yeah. They can always find the reason. Maybe so, it's because of the spoiler you put on your car. I think it had like something to do with that. Yeah. All right. Let's make sure these numbers are in. I think they're all in there. It looks like they are. We will... Roll back through. Charlie's got a hard stop, so he's heading out. We did not get to everything today. We do apologize for that. John Fetter, woman number one. Number two, Sonny Hostin on The View. Uh, got to take accountability. Until we take accountability, um, we're not going to get past all this. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's speech during the IRA convention that they had scheduled on CPI Day is number three. Number four is... Uh, Dash Dabrowski talking about Elon Musk solving world hunger and all the other stupid stuff he said in there. Uh, number five is Bernie Sanders upset about billionaires going to space. Number six is the Marxist, Marxist school that's only $40 to uh, attend. Uh, number seven goes to Kamala Harris for a couple different reasons. Number eight, dumb people in the house like Representative Hoyer in the deep state and Hank Johnson for the January 6th school board riots that apparently happened, I guess. That was all number eight. Number nine is the Little Mermaid controversy that shouldn't exist, in our opinion. And number 10 goes to the police officer, unfortunately still a police officer right now. So officer privilege, as Jeff named it. Thanks for doing those numbers, Jeff. I appreciate it. That helps out. And it looks like Costco threw some in there, too. Appreciate you. All right, so get your votes in. want to tell everyone, make sure, make sure you subscribe, you follow, you like, you do all the sharing and all the stuff that you got to do. That way we can grow the show, spread the message, whatever that means these days. But just get the truth out there to as many people as possible. We've gotten messages from people throughout the years who said that we – completely change their viewpoint on some things. And that's why we do this. Even if it's a small percentage of people who end up being changed because they heard something, it just clicked. It clicked one time for them. Uh, That's really important because then they can go out there and they can change other people as well. So keep that in mind when you're feeling down in the dumps, go subscribe, go follow, go like, do all that. It looks like the officer uh, I was trying to, is it Strauss? Uh, her thing's backwards. Officer who, um, man, I kind of hope I come in contact with her sometimes. She pulls me over, but uh, also kind of not. Looks like the dumb bleep winner is going to be the officer who was suspended for one day, and she definitely should not have a job. That's dumb bleep of the week. 
folks. That's why we do it. Thank you for voting. Thank you for listening. Tell a friend, tell a family member, tell the children. And we'll be right back here next week. Same Liberty time, same Liberty channel. Until then, have a good weekend and a good morning, Liberty. Liberty.